Hello everyone, this is Suzanne, God Crochet and Chatter. How is everyone today? I am feeling some better. My pain level is about a four and a half, which that is manageable. I haven't been doing much, I've just been resting, but after a while you're done resting. <laughs> but I've been resting. I just had to come on today because I saw something a friend of mine had posted on Facebook. And by the way, I'm out of Facebook jail now, so you will see postings on Praying From Your Heart group that I have. If you want to subscribe to that, the link is in the drop-down box below. So anyway, um, I found this and I went, yeah, spot on. I think Dorothy Hugan uh, posted it. Um, Maybe my friend Priscilla did, but um, Dorothy's always posting things. But uh, this was so good, I want to talk about it. But first of all, let's get to our prayer list. Um, Darcy Henderson, looking for a church home. Her husband has back issues, among other things. Bad insomnia, Darcy has bad insomnia. And her daughter, Becca, has back issues. Karen Wright, the process of having her back straightened out. She suffers from scoliosis. It's a very painful process. Dorothy Hugan, chronic pain. Most of the time, it's at a level 7 pain. Joanne Shute, oldest granddaughter, is suffering from depression. And Becca, she's having a second heart surgery very soon. We want to remember to keep all of these uh, in our prayers. And let's say a prayer right now. Heavenly Father, there are so many that are hurting and in pain. Even within this group, Lord, um, it's, it's a hard thing to watch these dear sisters go through this. Lord, I pray that you put your healing touch upon them as no other can. That you send them the gift of comfort, hope, that you uh, get them to the right doctors. Whatever your will is, Lord, please be with the, these women every day and bless the, the work of their hands, for they're limited in what they can do at times, Lord. So, Lord, we ask all these blessings in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. All right. It's a good way to start our, our devotional. All right, we have some another new member, Lana Moeller. She says she was glad to find this channel. She found us through the giveaway that's coming up August 11th. A winner will be drawn. So, welcome, Lana. I hope you uh, enjoy these devotions and you continue to be a, a faithful subscriber. All right, um, the Taria question. It was, what did man do for the first time after the birth of Enosh? And that was pray, Genesis 4, 26. All right, Taria question for today. Who stood under the altar of the fifth seal? Who stood under the altar of the fifth seal? All right. All right. Um, get my paperwork. Okay, let's get going. I'm so excited. I know, I'm always excited. But hey, when you're in the Lord, you're excited all the time. All right. We are a generation that will never come back. Do you believe that? I believe that. A generation that went to school and walked back. I remember drudging through the snow and walking back and walking to school. A generation that did their homework alone to get out ASAP to play in the street. Yes, indeed. A generation that spent all their free time on the street. Oh, I did. A generation that played hide and seek when dark. A generation that made mud cakes. A generation that collected sport cards. How many of our guys got into that big time? And uh, today, they're worth quite a few, bit of money, certain ones. A generation that found, washed, and sold empty Coke bottles to the local grocery store for five cents each. Wow, when you found a, a pop can or a pop bottle, man, off you were to, to the store. A generation that made paper t toys with their bare hands. I remember making their paper airplanes. A generation who bought vinyl albums to play on record players. A generation that collected photos and albums of clippings. A generation that played board games and cards on rainy days. Boy, did my brother and I played Monopoly. 
and I played um, cards with my grandma. We played hearts and go fish. Oh, so many good memories. A generation whose TV went off at midnight after playing the national anthem. A generation that had parents who were there. A generation that laughed under the covers in bed so parents didn't know we were still awake. A generation that is passing and unfortunately will never return. It's kind of sad. I feel sad for today's youth. Um, they're gaming. They're online early in their life. They're being taught such atrocious things now. And it just really it breaks your heart. I was reading about a young man in the Bible that certainly didn't listen and it got him in deep trouble. Um, we're going to talk about the revolt against Rehoboam. I'm going to read chapters uh, 12 through 15. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, Shechem or Shechem. There we go. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all of Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. So it happened when Jer Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, he was still in Egypt, for he had fled from the presence of King Solomon and had been dwelling in Egypt, that they sent and called him. Then Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father and heavy yoke which he put upon us, and we will serve you. So he said to them, Depart for three days, then come back to me. And the people departed. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived and said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, if you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them, speak good words with them, then they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And he said to them, What advice do you give? How shall we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Now here comes the trouble. When the young man who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus shall you speak to this people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. He's talking about he has more power than his father had. And now that whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whip, but I will chastise you with scourges. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice that the elders had given to him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, while well, I will chastise you with scourges. So the king did not listen to the people, for the turn of events was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord spoke and by Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So here's this young, inexperienced man taking the advice of the young man he grew up with. You know, they think they know everything and they're not going to listen to the advice of the wise elders giving him. And it became disastrous for um, Rehoboam. Um, in the end, um, he was murdered. And before that, he was only over the tribe of Judah and all the other kingdoms were of is with Israel. So, have you felt like everything has gone from bad to worse? I most certainly do. With the abortions, the gay activists, you know, all the stuff they're shoving down our children's throat about sexual things, you know, uh, these dress-up queens 
teaching in libraries and at schools and the parents taking their kids to the parades and just all the wickedness you can think of is going on today. Parents disrespect, children disrespecting their parents. My goodness, you know, I never disrespected my mom. She would slap me up sideways. And uh, undisciplined children, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's not the world I grew up in. We can't go back to this time. It's not going to happen. Once something happens, it's some, once, okay, once something happens, like we did in our childhood, it's very rare that that type of generation follows. In fact, this generation has become worse than ever. Their handheld playing games, their um, lack of social media, spending hours on Facebook, online, um, rioting, um, shooting, killing people. Oh my goodness. It's, you know, but these things must come to be. <sighs> Sad. How do we show up when we feel small and weak? How does God work when we have nothing to give? To renew your strength means exchange your strength, exchange for something better. From a state of fear, weakness, and insecurity, Gideon emerged as Israel's hero, filled with God's presence and passion for deliverance. Studying about Gideon will encourage you to recognize your weakness as key that the Lord gives you to unlock the full experiences of his strength in your life. Um, sometimes we, maybe we'll do a study in depth on Gideon. Um, he was quite a guy and he emerged as Israel's he hero. Isn't that great to emerge as a hero to a people that are struggling, that are lost? How much more do we reach out to people that are struggling and lost and tell them about Jesus or say, God bless you. Can I pray for you? Um, you know, do you believe in God? You know? There's nothing better than being in the center of God's will. My daughter uh, called me yesterday, and she is struggling so much with her migraines. She's taking, um, I think the last I heard it was 60 milligrams of prednisone a day. Of course, her prednisone is she has depression. She has gained a lot of weight. Um, she just doesn't feel good. And she... She gets, she has her periods of being down. And she called yesterday and vented some to us. And uh, she just had to have three teeth pulled. They were $280 a pop. And she has to go back and have more dental work done. And then she's going to need two bridges. So it's a lot on them right now. Um, they're doing everything they do. They're doing everything they can to scrape together the money. And, um... It's, it's been a tough journey for them. And I, I asked her when we got all done with it, I said, can I say a prayer for you? And she said, of course. And uh, that was a big step um, in the past. She's not always been open to prayer, but now she is open to prayer. And I said a, a prayer and she thanked me for it, which was awesome. And um, she called me back a little later and said, um, Mom, uh, Lori and I are coming over Sunday at 1 o'clock, that's tomorrow, and they're going to clean my house. So I made a list of things that I can't do because of my neck, and I told her last time how I did things, and it laid me up for two days. And she says, Mom, you can't do that. And she said, you got to let me know when you need help. And so she called me back and said, we're coming. And I said, okay. So I got a list of cleaning the bathroom well, straightening up my clutter on the floor, um, vacuuming real good, um, giving the bathroom a huge cleaning. It needs it really bad after all that mess. I got a lot of it done, but it still needs it. And, uh, to restock my tissue and toilet paper station. So, um, I bought a lot of things way back when they were at, um, good prices. I really stocked up. So, um, I'm glad I did that because of the way prices have jumped. But, you know, I... I want to be there for my daughter. I want to support her. I want to pray for her. I want to help. And um, I believe that God 
will put it on your heart and you will know you will get that Holy Spirit nudging where you need to do this and when we are able we do give help and I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a great giver and I, I, God that's my gift and I love my gift I love helping people encouraging people getting on here doing devotionals um, you know it just it's fantastic and um, so with all this going on in the world and yeah it breaks our heart that we can't go back to a simpler time of these days that we read that that the kids are missing out on so much grown-ups are missing out on so much that we just have, have to have faith you know I don't look I don't see things getting much better in the future with this world I truly hope we get somebody a lot better in office that can turn things around to the way they were four years ago. I mean, when Trump was in office, I don't know how many of you like Trump or not, that's me, but if you look at the list of accomplishments he's done and the things that Biden has done, Trump wins hands down. And he was getting things turned around at the border, with the pipeline, uh, making China pay their fair share, all that stuff. And I could get into a lot of politics, but that's my take on it and I just pray for a godly leader I don't consider myself a Republican or a Democrat I'm a patriot and I I want what's good for this country I want us to put God first in this country and um, pray for the leaders that God opens their eyes so anyway that's my little tangent I didn't mean to get off on that but you know things are in a mess but as Christians, as you and I, God has promised, fear not, trust me, follow my lead. You know, he told us you will have this going on in your life. You will have trials and tribulations. You will be, you know, picked on for following me, maybe tortured, uh, beaten up. And, um, but God says, through that all, if you trust me, remember we talked about having, you know, here's the world, here's us, and in between God and we have to trust God in between that so that we, 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 we do away with that fear. So um, that's important. Here's where the fear lies, but we got to rise above it. And when we do that, we can boldly claim that God is in charge, that Jesus will take care of us. He cares for the, the animals, the birds of the air. How much more for us? So, yeah, I could sit, I could sit here and talk for another hour. I just, um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm not going to overdo it. Um, it's hard. We may go out for a walk. My husband is suffering from a really bad headache, um, today. And it gets so bad he can hardly speak. But on Monday, we're getting to that allergist. And I'm hoping we get a good report. And also pray that my daughter gets better insurance. She's, she's done the paperwork to get a subsidy of 450 toward her insurance that will only leave her a manageable amount and that way she can get in Ann Arbor to this headache clinic she sure they, they got good results so I'm praying for that to happen too all right everyone this is Suzanne at God Crochet and Chatter yes I got big smiles today I feel great um, I'm, I'm, I'm just so pleased and I'm learning, finally, to back off. <laughs> All right, everyone, you have a most blessed Saturday. And um, I will be back on Monday with an overview of the book of Romans. All right, everyone, you take care and God bless you.